Lorenzo and Arthur here with Mike Gaddy with Real Estate on Record. Our producer, Stefanuch, is going to ask us some rapid-fire questions, so let's uh, hit them off, Steph. There's no season to buy or sell. It's just obviously in the spring and uh, fall market, there's more inventory to choose, right? But then uh, there's always more buyers to, uh, during those times, right? So, yeah, you might have a little bit more inventory, but you might get a better deal at Christmas, for example, right? So there's no exact season to buy or sell, no. Yeah, I agree. I, I always go against the curve. Whatever everyone else is doing, you do the opposite. You're always going to have a better opportunity at that point, like Mike said now. Christmas time, you know how many deals we did on Christmas Eve? It's usually like a tradition yeah. to do a deal on Christmas Eve. Everyone's partying, enjoying themselves, and we're like, that's a good property. We can do a deal. Like, you get a good Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. I did, I, out of 13 years, probably like seven years at least on Christmas Eve. Yeah. That's yeah. Last year we didn't do one, though. The year before it was like right to the nail. Really? Right before we like, like cut into the meat. Today's market, I would say the condo market is oversaturated. Like we have like, I think what, 7,000 listings for condos right now. And even even assignments are like fire sale almost. For people who so, assignment is, what's an assignment? so assignments basically buying uh, the deed to a property prior to it being completed. So basically the building's under construction, someone bought it pre-construction uh, and is trying to sell it before the building's completing it and they're taking over. So. Uh, that would be your assignment sale. So we're seeing a ton of those right now, mainly because I, I think a lot of the, a lot of people bought on speculation that the market was going to go up, and obviously we're not seeing those the, the market coming up, and they're not qualifying to close on those properties because it might be their second, third, fourth property, right? So they can't get the mortgage now that the rates went through the roof. So we're seeing a ton of pressure in the condo market. If I had to say say right now, yeah, you could probably get a a, a steal on a con, certain condos in certain areas. Depending, it's all going to be dependent on your budget. Ulti ultimately, um, multifamily, more, the more doors you buy, the cheaper you're going to pay per door, right? So if you have more money, I would still push you to, like, say, to go in the multifamily scenario, like even a, a duplex where you can house hack, live on the main, rent out the basement type thing, help pay off that that mortgage a little bit, um, but. Right now, yeah, you could probably get a steal in a condo if your if your budget's in five six hundred k range for sure. Well, well, Mike just did a deal right now for one of our clients. Just we were actually just were there yesterday at the house that that, that they that she bought with her uh, boyfriend. Um, you know, they were looking at condos, but we pushed them into something that was more of like a condo townhouse rather. So there's more upside to that in the future. It's still a house. It doesn't have that feel where it's it's. Um, you know, you, you have the huge common expenses, the whole building expenses, an elevator. You still have a house. So I think in, in the, once you, I mean, you always got to look at stuff for resale. It's just boring. It's a boring conversation, but you look at everything like resale. Uh, what's going to happen when I got to resell this property in three to five years? What happens if, if we break up? What happens if something happens or we got to, we had a baby? It's always something, right? Like you can't look at life like today is, is, is it's the end and this is how it's going to be. Life always progresses, so you always got to look at resale value. And I think um, it, when you're dealing with more of a, a less of a like more of a niche type product rather than more of like a generic condominium, you're going to always sell it for a lot quicker and for more money. So when Mike bought the uh, condo townhouse for the clients, it's a way better concept. And they were pushing us for a con for an apartment, and we redirected them into something we know that's going to be beneficial for them in the future. I think that's part of being a professional in this industry is the kind of like. Hey, I get what you're saying. I understand it. I'll show you a few to get an understanding, but let me introduce something else to you and see if you like that. Not to push it upon them, but just kind of show them different options for the same amount of money and then kind of explain it to them that in the future, investment-wise, when you do sell this property, you're going to make more bang for the buck. Uh, you're going to sell it in a shorter period of time because there's less competition. And not to mention, you'll have a probably, a probably a better lifestyle living there, so more happy. Nice. Does that make sense, Stefano? Sense. I got to yeah. see. That you're a bad influence. Look at this. You brought the beer. So, of apple cider. Is this, is this, this is apple cider? This is the, the fifth. <laughs> I don't even know what this and is. A smoking chocolate bar. Is that what that no, is? No, it's like those little cigarettes when you're a kid. Why, my nun used to bring the chocolate oh, ones. Oh, yeah. The chocolate oh, the chocolate my nun used to bring from Italy. Do you remember the Popeyes? Yeah, yeah. They used to blow a little powder of sugar smoke came out. Did they? Yeah, man. Sure. Sponsored by Marlboro. <laughs> it's like they get these kids started young. I don't think 
think it's an exact career. I think to be honest, if you're um, to be if you're sports related, like an athlete, I think being an athlete, to be honest, what you'll do really well in real estate. And, and again, it's an abstract answer. That's very abstract. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you, you you learn to you learn to number one, it's it's like you're very committed, you're very disciplined, you're a hard worker. You understand, like working as a team, where to get it. I mean, there's there's realtors that, that we know that that built these huge huge organizations. I yeah. don't want to mention names, but it's like you look at their background. It's like sports oriented and team oriented and and leadership. Like that's huge. Discip discipline was a big one. Yeah, because it doesn't matter if you're in car sales or if you're in sales. In period, if you can't communicate, um, you know, the sales language to to who you're selling to or or the people around you, you're gonna be shit. Yeah. Like unnecessary noise. Like throw that thing in the fucking garbage. <laughs> throw it in the garbage. It's so noisy. Like what's the point? We're in the back of our office in Kleinberg, and we're hosting uh, our eighth or ninth. Ninth. Ninth annual uh, fall festival where we bring out all our family, friends, clients, uh, and obviously give them a little bit like uh, giving back to our community. We're giving pumpkins, uh, like we mentioned earlier. We're gonna have a full petting zoo with uh, sheep, llamas, alpacas, ducks, <laughs> chinchillas, turkey, or turkeys. <laughs> Are we having turkeys? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Shit, I gotta get a turkey. No, I know, but I want a real turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine bringing it home with you? I think by the end of the year, there's potential to see another increase. 23, there's a potential to see another increase. I think going into 2024, it's going to be determined on what happens with job numbers, what happens with inflation. Um, so I think it's a little bit too early to predict. But either way, I think the damage is done. Um, and I think we're going to have a little bit of a pain to be felt and a slowing market, but more of a need to sell versus a want to sell. Yeah, I think I think next year is going to be just what we've been always talking about, right? You've seen a lot more conversations of of needing to sell based on financial issues. 2024, right? Yeah. All the mortgages are coming up, including mine. It's just everything, man. Anybody you talk to, I, I speak to people every day. It just even if I don't talk to them or I'm not their acting real estate agent or they don't know what I do for a living, it's it's their number one conversation. No. Um, and that's what they bring up. I don't ask for that information. It's just like, hey, how's it going? It's nice. Like, ah, fucking mortgage. It's gonna, it's gonna get up. It's gonna get up there. And it's not like you're. Hey, listen, if you're gonna come up with the extra dough, and your payments coming up, and it's going on principal, it's like, well, there's a light at the end of that tunnel. It's like, it's gonna shave my, you know, length of owner, uh, length of mortgage by ten years. It's, it's good. I'm doing a little bit of sacrifice now. But when you're giving extra money just for the interest and survival, it's just maddening. Manning, it, it, like I think ultimately right now, if you kind of like just picture like you're like a drone, like a camera, you just flip up, like whoosh, just shoot right up to the sky, and you kind of look at all the houses, and you're looking at every house is like with, with like um, like a heat heat vision or whatever that is, right? Like you know what I mean? You're looking at houses, and it's just like a spinning wheel of like people just paying debt. And it's not even like debt to to get something out of it. It's just like paying debt to who? to the big banks, to the government, and you're not getting anywhere. If you're looking at our average mortgage rate, 60 to 80 years is an average rate of mortgage in Canada. Amortization. What are we doing, folks? We don't live that long. Is the I'm. The no, it's less. Yeah, by far. We're, we're the most indebted country in the G G7 right now. By far. Total debt to rich. And, and I think we're number two in the world, or three in the world. I think there's a few other like uh, European countries, yeah. Rates? Yeah. I, I agree with Mike. I think we'll have one more one more pump up before the year end, and I don't know. Do you see it dipping a full percent by the end of next year? Dipping? No. It's it's it's. I don't think so. Whether it's a percent or not, whether it's a percent or not, I don't think it's going to be determined on on our our GDP growth, right? If we're continuing to grow and we're adding jobs to to the market, no, we're not going to drop by one percent next year, right? It's too. I, I don't know. I can't tell you what the numbers are gonna be next year. But right now, yeah, I think they're gonna potentially raise. And I think they're gonna be slow to, to drop rates. Like, they, I think they took their foot off the pedal in the, in the spring, right? In, in, the, in the summer months, when they basically said, we're gonna put a pause on on rates. And, and the market went through the roof. We went, we were insane. I couldn't, I didn't have enough time to show enough houses, um, which is fantastic because people got to 
buy and get into those houses. But unfortunately, I'm sure there's going to be some people that got caught in there that potentially wouldn't have got caught if they didn't feel that optimism that that the, the rates were going to go up or come down, right? They thought rates are coming down. We're done uh, hiking rates. Unfortunately, now we're going the other way. Now, how many people get caught in it? I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's like, you know, if you don't need to move, don't move. I don't, I don't get it. Like, just sit tight. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, we make money on people moving and buying and selling. Like, I get it. But if you don't have to do anything, don't do anything. You're not forced to. Sit tight. If you have a house already, sit in the house. Like, what is it? Like, I don't know. Well, the problem in 2024 is everyone's mortgage. Can I have the light? You have the lighter? You have the lighter? Yeah. Everyone's mortgage is coming up for renewal. What do you do, though? But you're going to you sell the house? And live with your parents. So, oh, so he's, saying pe- right? he's saying people... Yeah, people people that aren't, aren't forced to, but that's what, what he's saying. Like some people are gonna definitely be forced to, and you have you have no choice. You don't want to get caught where it goes into a power of sales situation, right? You wanna you wanna be a little bit proactive where you can keep more money in your pocket. And, and at that point, call us. Let, let's run the numbers. If we can help you, we'll, we'll do what we can. But like Steve just said, if you can st- st- hold tight and uh, basically weather the storm, weather it, right? But, but Mike, if- they can find <laughs> that was amazing stuff. They can find us on Instagram, Spotify, YouTube. You can find me at, at Mike Gaddy Realtor and Steve. Where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at, at, at Steve Stevens Leonardo, right? But but just even just touching that. No, but honestly, if you don't gotta do anything, don't do anything. Like I don't understand. But, but that's the problem. But the but so 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 if people have to, then they should sell before they have to. Then you need to be proactive. And God bless them for that, because people that are proactive can capitalize on people being slow to, to the to the punch. But if you want to, to like, if you know your renewals coming up and you ran the numbers, not very difficult to run your numbers. We're running a, a new a new ad program right now, uh, marketing program in in, in all of uh, Kleinberg. It's like, be proactive. Can you handle the next rate inter- interest rate hike? Scan our QR code. Go check it out. It brings us to to our app. You go there, you punch in your new numbers, you punch in the rate that's potentially going to happen, and it'll tell you if you're going to be able to afford it. So we're already being proactive for people because I don't think people are thinking about this. So now let's just say you live in a house um, and your mortgage is already four or $5,000, 45000 You're like, my breaking point is 5500 If I get 5500 I need to sell this house. Well, scan our QR code, check off that extra quarter point or half point. Yeah, we're yeah. again, this is... August, when you're sitting in a room with other professionals and you're thinking about worst case scenario, what do we do? How do we market? How do we better uh, give better tools for our clients? Like we're not, again, this is not a typical realtor where we're sun dancing and, and doing like TikTok videos. This is like we're professionals, we're business people, right? So now can you afford your mortgage right after you, sc- you, you scan our QR code? And hopefully people that actually do it and say, well, hey, this is way over. Now we're in a negative. We're, we, we won't be able to hold on to the house for six months. Let's unload it now. Um, yeah, we're not making top dollar like we would have done like six to six months to a year ago, but we'll get out. We'll still have profit three, four hundred K. We can get into like, like you said, maybe living with, with a family member temporarily or even rent. Who gives a shit? And then wait for the market to come down. Let it come to the bottom and then buy. I, I think people have too. I think people have too much ego or what other people think about them. 100%. Nobody cares about anybody. Trust me. You're, like I've moved away from my old area. I haven't hit, received a call. If I stayed in that old area because, oh, what are they gonna think about me? I moved away or this. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit. Just do what's best for you, your family, your kids. And if you have to like move things around, do it. Cause nobody's gonna remember. So the best thing to do is they have to follow our Spotify. Spotify? And scan Spotify, the, YouTube. Scan the QR code that Stefano's gonna attach to our, our right. post. Uh, we're gonna put it right, right about here, okay? <laughs> okay, so good. Do you have a QR code active? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. so we're going to put it right here. You send it to me. I will. All right. See you guys later. Ciao, Stefano. Ciao.